Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesday where Hello. we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, kind of just talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux open source. Anything else that kind of catches our attention, open sourcey stuff. And uh, I'm Vin. And uh, <laughs> that, I'm that, Jill. Somebody's just cursing <laughs> up a storm before we started recording. Man, jeez. <laughs> like, no. And then, and then, like when I curse up a storm, I don't, I, I don't blame it on the audience. How about you, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to wish everyone, including Vin, a happy holidays, and happy holidays to all our hosts on Linux Gamecast, and to our wonderful viewers and patrons. Because <laughs> I am going to enjoy my time off. <laughs> That's for sure That's in the holidays this about, year. Man. And if you've uh, yeah been alive. This last year, you might have been stuck working at home or very glad to work at home. Having the time off during holidays hits a little differently than when you're like, oh, so I don't go in the office, but I don't have to do anything. Then you got to be careful. You're like, well, I could catch up on stuff. You're like, no, don't do it. Save yourself. <laughs> Something I've been playing yeah. around with. I, I don't encourage anyone to undergo this adventure, but this, this quickly became a, uh, I got to get this done is setting up a retro gaming server from 2019, right? I know mm -hmm. retro. <laughs> I got the Trackmania 2 stadium server. Uh, the setup is basically complete-ish. Um, all the tracks are loaded for this week that we're going to be playing. Uh, thanks to everybody who helped me test it last Friday. We had some fun. I tried to keep it to like a regular staging map. I wanted to see what the load was going to be on the server and what I can get away with. Um, but it's up right now. If you want to hop on for some practice, you can set some records. That was like the big thing <laughs> I had to get set in because it'll do record tracking locally for us. So we'll be able to do against each other. You know, if we're out of sync, if we're not all playing at the same time, you can get on and practice and next person like, oh, okay, I'm going to see if I can beat that time. Then we're going to go at it again this Friday live. We'll be on Twitch, 7.30 p.m. So we'll invite everybody to hop in. I'll keep it to 10 players. If you want to get on Discord like we were last week, you don't need video or anything. You just hop on uh we're not really keeping score, but you know, we're, we're keeping score a little bit. That, yeah, <laughs> that was an adventure. It's track mania Two stadium. It's probably on sale. Winter cell. Of course that's a launch today. And I went to my wish list I'm like, man, those were the same cells. They were like two weeks ago. Never mind that. But <laughs> yeah, that that's what, all I did yesterday, Jill, because I ran into yeah, I ever was... done. I was just going to say that Ven has worked really hard to get that up and running. I didn't work very hard. Right. I, I worked angrily. That's a, there's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> if you've ever taken like legacy stuff, which this shouldn't be like, this uh, is, I can say this and I'll hit a lot of people right in the fields. I ran into situations like, oh, this runs on this particular version of um, SQL, you know, five series. I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. Also, this version point point release of php and only mm. this or you're going to be editing a hundred and something files by hand to update like oh okay fortunately i started off you were following me in discord yesterday i, I was rolled back to sent os 7 with a down force downgraded version of sql just to get things up we got done with that nonsense the server's running on debian 9 but it's running and uh, hopefully it's not a seething security risk, but it's backed up. I don't care. I can nuke it from orbit. There's nothing um, of value on it other than just mm. the scores, but getting the database and all that. It's there. Go play with it. I'll be racing again in it tonight because I'm practicing. I'm coming to win, kids. Old man Vin is <laughs> going to be spanking you youngsters or oldsters because uh, <laughs> that's how I'm going to roll. Now. Cool. <laughs> let's start off. With something that I <laughs> would only have interest in if I could weaponize it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So get your holiday cheer on with your Linux desktop with these festive snowing apps. Yes, we're going to go there because tis the season. Because it's you, man. <laughs> it's me. And actually, before we get started, I want to show everyone this cool shirt. Oh, no. This is a user-friendly shirt um, that Iliad made back in the, the the late 90s. And it's got Tex the Penguin on top of the Christmas tree with all the characters from the comic. And all right. It's quite special. And I and I see all the snow, Ben. <laughs> it's snowing on LWDW. <laughs> you say that? That's a lot of snow, so I'd use dandruff. 
<laughs> so yeah, so if you're using GNOME Shell, you can install the Let It Snow on GNOME extension, and this will add a layer of continuously falling snowflakes over your entire desktop, like what you're seeing on the screen here. Ven is doing nope, to I my camera. No, I got rid of it because I was going to start messing with it. I was like, "What color can I get this snow?" <laughs> Well, what's nice about this uh, app is that it actually does run old, on multiple monitors pretty nicely, and you can adjust how much the snow drops. But there is another snowy app, which is my favorite, called X-Snow, and X-Snow works with an X11 session and the desktop or, or X-Window Manager of your choice. And unlike the Let It Snow GNOME extension, it is a full animation suite. It, it with X snow snow falls in from top of the screen and then it will land on the tops of windows that are open and pile up and then when you move the window away the the snow falls and piles up at the bottom of the display so it's really cool and the physics are accurate <laughs> so, and it's really awesome and uh, you can add Santa's sleigh being pulled by reindeer, trees and houses for scenery, or even meteorites. And there's fa and which are falling stars. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and there's raining death. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> only, I, I guess if you're in charge of like deploying business laptops or any other um, stuff that you know the employees can't change anything, let it snow. I mean, that, that would absolutely uh, drive somebody crazy. Now, one thing I do want to bring up, X-Snow, available mm -hmm. in Debian repos, I checked before the show. It has an interesting history. I mean, it started its life on yeah. Mac way back in the early way 80s. Way back when. Like, oh, I want this Mac yeah. to snow. I'm like, okay. And uh, <laughs> real development didn't start until uh, dude got a hold to a SGI system. So that's where it lived. And it finally made its way over to X-Windows later on. And um yeah, I do believe it's like mandatory rollout for a business PC. That's uh, something all your users should experience year round. <laughs> Definitely. And you can put it on their older computers and it will take lots of CPU cycles. <laughs> That's the spirit, Steve. Festive meteorites. That's what we need. That's what we need. Yes. Festive meteorites. Now, Absolutely. <laughs> something that might not, uh, Xno might not work with Wayland. And that could be a oh. problem. Uh, oh, could be a problem very true, Finn. On Fedora 36. What am I talking about? A proposed change. What moon future are we living in? Wayland by default with the NVIDIA proprietary mm. drivers. Um, this is a bold move. This is. I mean, yeah, Wayland's going to be default for the AMD hardware right now. And you're like, okay, that's neat. This is going to default with the NVIDIA proprietary. I think it's 495 and after. So uh, next spring, Fedora plans to set Wayland by default, and it's going to default directly to that, but you're still going to have the option to roll it back to X, uh, so don't panic. Yeah. Granted, now this is only a proposal, but I'm kind of excited about it because more mm -hmm. eyes, more better, because you got people like me, I'm not touching Wayland until it's done. Like until I, And what I mean by that is until I have to and there's no option B. I will yeah. cold or dead hands. It's going to be a while. <laughs> uh, have no desire. Well, uh, okay, I take that back. I take that back. Um, in here, I should put the yeah. emphasis on that. Like Playing around laptops, yeah, it's fun to play with, but I wouldn't want to try to set anything up and rely on it yet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know um, I have been in contact with one of the developers of Fedora, and he was saying they have been working really hard to get all work out all the bugs from NVIDIA on Wayland. So I, I guess they're going to be ready for it. And this is Fedora, and they rolled out Wayland and Popwire, of course, Wayland with X, and then Popwire, Pipewire, and that's working great. Pop so wire. I think they're going to do it right. I like that. Pop wire. <laughs> System 76, call me. Licensing, we'll work it out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one but it's an i email said it client, I, I know to confuse people uh, <laughs> what, what so. what's really got me on this mm -hmm. is like this weird universe of being it's just having proprietary nvidia drivers like during like setup with fedora 
because Fedora mm-hmm. was like, and still to some extent today, I got to play with like modern Fedora. I really need to, because I know a lot of stuff is optional, like copper repos during install, but that wasn't mm-hmm. there for the longest time. <laughs> like, okay, let's make it usable and get all the, uh, you know, MP3s and stuff like that. They were very late to that game, but it's very exciting. Yeah. I like to see this. So uh, absolutely. Now, for <laughs> whatever reason, Jill's like, you know what? The creator of app images <laughs> hasn't blown Ven up on Twitter in a minute. <laughs> in a while, yeah. So this is App Image Pool. It's a GUI front end for managing, downloading, and finding app images from AppImageHub.com. And App Image Pool is actually a really nice. App image app store made for Linux using Flutter. It's it's one of the most flush flushed out app image options out there for managing app image on images on your desktop. And some of the features include the ability to download a specific version of an app image file. So you can and and that's actually really cool. So with Blender, you can download an older version or a newer version. And you can filter applications by categories on uh, the left-hand side in the panel. And it actually looks very similar to the software center on Ubuntu. And you can it has a download prog- progress icon. You can manage all installed app images, the view to the download history, and it even has a light and dark mode <laughs> modes you can choose from. And uh, it's it's really Actually, it's really, really well done. I was really impressed with it. And you can download App Image Pool as an app image, of course, or as a flat pack. Isn't that interesting? No, it needs to be a snap. We need to come full circle on this. This needs to be crazy. There we go. I did. I, I was rolling um, rolling over the GitHub page and I got down to installation. It was like, flat pack. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, this yeah, just so- having a central repository. That's something I didn't have the heart to like write back to the... Uh, creator of app because <laughs> you know, he, he was very with, with zeal saying app images should be deployed by individual developers yeah. on their website and that's where you should download them and i like i, I get it we need both worlds the other part <laughs> of me was like well you know not having a central repository could also have contributed to app images never really being a big thing yeah, they never really took off because, because people of don't that. have time to yeah. go to individual sites and update stuff. And like the only app image that I normally will download is KDM Live because I'm just like, I, mm-hmm. I, I love that crew yeah. and I always want to take a little peek at what they're up to. And yeah, that's Blender's how we now. test it. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever there's a new release, that's what I, yeah, the app image. And other apps too. I download the the GIMP as an app image, um, Shotcut. Lots of <laughs> lots of programs. <laughs> Let me say with GIMP, the the limited amount of stuff I do with GIMP, I, I just hang on to whatever's installed. So old version is. What oh, I'm okay. Um, <laughs> a GUI. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So what's really, really uh, wonderful is um, with App Image Pool, I actually tested it and downloaded the classic Tron game, Armageddon Game Tron. Remember that, folks, <laughs> from from back in the day? <laughs> and one of the very first games on Linux. So I downloaded the Armageddon Tron advanced version for a test and then launched it by double clicking it in the installed tab. Now, in the install tab, tab, it wasn't obvious that you could double click it and run it. So that's my only suggestion is that there is like maybe a little run feature or or load like in other other app repository um, GUI front ends. <laughs> so that would be nice. But it's it's definitely a wonderful app and one of the, the nicest ones to download app images on. But like you were saying, Vin, about the developer, we had talked about AppMan, a universal app image installer that works like Apt in the terminal. Mm-hmm. We talked about that in September, and that's what the developer, when we were talking about it, he was <laughs> not happy with that app, <laughs> like you were saying. <laughs> well, I mean, he made something like this. Now, I, it does raise the question, where does this um, database pull from? Yeah, this one... Uh, Pulls from uh, appimagehub.com, so it's it's one that I use, okay. you know, mm. was using every day, anyways. So 
Yeah. <laughs> it's still sacrilege. Uh, yeah. <laughs> VR. But I do, I do get it. To, I do get the developer's point. I you don't. That, neither does anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the in the early days of it's App Images, that was a thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> that was a thing to be able to download them on individual sites and and like you did with EXEs back in the Windows days. So I understand that, but but I personally like today's day of having a, a hub for all the things. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, people like horses, but we don't ride them anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wrong show, Ven. <laughs> the horse. <laughs> S-V-R. Is Simula VR. Yes. This is something mm-hmm. I learned about, and uh, I just wanted to give it a mention because I thought it was kind of neat, because I, I've definitely brought this up on shows before, is this This is where VR has my interest, as a desktop, you know, allowing yeah. you to run a 2D desktop, Absolutely. you know, just Linux apps with, but this, this is kind of like a snack pick. That's a little bit of a preview. Takes less than a minute to install. It does require mm-hmm. you to have a toaster to put on your head. That's up to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's compatible with Steam VR headsets, uh, anything with a Linux driver. They're working on their own VR headset. Uh, and they even they even have a low pass filter that makes text look less worse. Still looks bad, uh, but less bad. Yeah. And um it's gonna yeah, well, mm-hmm. it's not going to. It currently supports anything with the um optional open XR back then. So Go play with it. This doesn't see the text not there yet. That, when I say the text not there, the display, the headsets, the hardware is not there yet. Because yeah. I want to, you know, currently right now, two, three, four, five, six, I have seven monitors and every mm-hmm. one of them is being used. Not just like, oh, I got one. No, they're full. I would like this yeah. virtualized. I would like that headset, put it on, and like, boom, you know what? Seven monitors. Let's have. 20 or just one massive wraparound one and something like that. You know, I'm not interested in the minority report stuff because if you've ever played with a Wii nunchucks after about three <laughs> yeah. minutes, you're like, ah, I'm out of shape. Put those things down. Uh, but what we need is uh, like light headsets, wireless headsets, and resolutions above 11DK. Before, uh, yes. You know, because we address things like the text. You, you remember like first gen, like the first, uh, Android device. Those were rough looking, man. Like before oh, we had high rough. resolution, small screens. Like you, you don't want to live in a texty <laughs> life. We're like, eh. At least that. Yeah. Don't. Well, you know, one of the things I'm looking really forward to this um, regarding is the innovation that it will create. Being used as a standard desktop, I can see so much wonderful development um, and use cases for it. For say. Uh, um, people with accessibility issues. So I think this is a, a, a huge deal. And I think it's really neat that they're going to be actually putting out a hardware-based headset called the Simula One, which already has the the Linux-based OS, Simula OS, baked in, which is really neat. So it'll be the first uh, VR headset with Linux installed on it. And to be able to use it on all your other um, headsets like the the Vive and the Oculus that that's a game changer. So this is wonderful development, and I can see this really taking off. <laughs> it, it's the oh they got a video demonstration. Let's see what this thing looks like in action. Let's see what it looks like in action. Boom. Okay, mm-hmm. we got to do better than this video. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, that's what you want, Vin, for all your monitors. Uh, yeah, something roughly kind of, yeah, <laughs> maybe instead of having, you know, you having to move your head around, have th- all the screens on, on the VR panel at once no. in order. I, I want no. them <laughs> flying at my head so I have to dodge them constantly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just looking for the audio listeners. This is pretty much what you're visualizing. Um, you know, a crude, ver- oh, look, we got top open. Of course I probably would if i could just spin up an extra monitor you know when you've been thinking about stuff like that yeah to that point you know i want to see the use cases that will develop from this once 
having an extra display is not like, oh, I need to go buy a monitor and have a video card that supports more than four displays. And when it just becomes like, oh, yeah, I want another display. Why does it look like a Cheeto? Because it can. (laughs) Yeah, true. (laughs) So I think we're going to see some interesting things come about that. Absolutely. Now. You thought you were going to get out of the show without me talking about some Linux audio stuff. You were wrong because <laughs> I want to talk about yet another plugin format with the backing of Yuhi and Bitfig. So they clap, are clap. <laughs> working on, you know, currently when you think about audio plugin format on Linux, we have LV2. I have some experience with LV2. I made a compressor plugin just to learn how to do it and move. Um, documentation on that. It's kind of scattershot. We have VST2, VST3. The problem with like VST3, which is kind of a popular one, is some of the licensing issues. It's free to use, kind of, unless they change their mind, then they're going to want some money. So people are kind of hesitant with it. Apple's got like their own proprietary thing, but I mean, come on. I just said Apple. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know some weird proprietary. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's other frameworks like Juice that you can play with, which doesn't work very well over X11 forwarding. So I don't use it. This, this is yet another contender that is going to be rolling out. And some early work has already been done with it. Um, it's called Clap. I've been putting off saying what it was <laughs> called because. Yes. <laughs> really? That sounds like something that we would have named. Yeah. <laughs> Pure C ABI. People can develop any programming language they like. Liberally licensed. Fast plug-in scanning, that's something VST <laughs> is absolutely missing. And uh, yeah, a couple of people are backing this. Like when I saw Bedwig was messing around, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. they're going to be including nice. this. And like, it is not ready for production yet, but this is going to be our wonderful feature. It's up on GitHub, a couple of repos. <laughs> you got regular clap, the clap host. <laughs> Can't make this up. <laughs> Clap plugins, clap helpers, and clap juice extension. <laughs> it's probably the worst oh one. Then I have to say this: clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off the clapper. The clap host, man, I I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Oh. I, I mean, keeping. I mean, come on, come on. It's something we can get over because look, mm-hmm. me and you just had a conversation about the gimp. Yes. <laughs> Without even yeah. thinking twice. You think somebody is unfamiliar with open source stuff? They're like, wow, they're talking about the gap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Open source projects have a long and proud history yeah. of questionable history. naming. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. We welcome our new clappy plugin format. Yes. Now, speaking of Apple, though. Apple did it good. Apple, Apple helped yes, out. Yes, they did. They, uh, they, they, they poured one out for, for our penguins. And um, mm-hmm. Hector just put out a little tweet. You know, Hector's working on, how do you say, a, what's Akashi Linux? I, um, Asahi. Asahi. Asahi Linux. It was a yes. something. <laughs> that he's basically been reverse engineering the M1 architecture and getting like a real full blown linux up and running on it they've made amazing progress amazing progress but hector writes looks like apple changed requirements for the mako kernel files in 12.1 breaking our existing Mm -hmm. installation process and they also added a new raw image mode that will never break again and doesn't require makos so Mm. you know just reading through this and like to his point he cannot think of a single reason why they had had that for themselves yeah, They build their own Makos with their own processes. They have no use for raw images. They're saying, hey, use this. <laughs> it's easier and we won't break it in the future. Asahi for the, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that that's kind of interesting. Now, I've already seen the naysayers. Local Apple just wants to make sure that people can buy our M1s. Now, this does get interesting and make servers out of them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> soon as uh not being an early adopter always saving money because that that m1 mini that first gem m1 mini is going to be in my house at some point because i want yeah, to play with it here. i want to see what it's going to do absolutely unless yeah. uh but then apple you know we're going to have full-blown linux running with one thing i'm waiting on is gpu acceleration and that is very much in the works but 
Apple is going to turn around and release. We haven't seen what Apple can do mm -hmm. with this chip yet. This is this has been some low key stuff. Because I fully yeah. believe Apple is going to drop like something mm -hmm. like a seventy core M series, yeah, either an M two or something like that for their Pro workstation and charge seventy cores worth of Apple. You know, <laughs> we're talking about the company, the, the with next like the thousand dollar metal stick for the monitor company. So, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the next iteration of the M1 Max. <laughs> I think definitely cool. the Mac Pros. Maybe they can make like a bigger trash can. I think. I mean, yeah, very true. Yeah. Well, I was really happy about this news, also, Ven. And honestly, yeah this this is a this is a big deal that um, Apple has given to the Linux community. But Apple does run Linux on the back end and does contribute to Linux kernel and driver development. In fact, they actively seek out Linux kernel developers and uh, driver developers. So, and I, I really think that now Apple realizes that lots of Linux developers are using their laptops and computers. And so much effort has been, has gone into cracking the M1 code to get Linux on there. So it's nice that they threw us a bone, right? <laughs> They're definitely, I want to say somebody on the engineering side, you know, this this yeah. is like something like, hey, do you mind if we just change this? by ah, other reasons, you know, this person sort of thing. You don't have to worry about just sign, sign off on that. I'm like, all right, right, cool, we got you. It's not yeah. any higher than that, you know, as far as like sea level. Anybody at Apple's like, we love Linux. Mm -hmm. But it's good that they did this. Mm -hmm. It's good that they did this and that they haven't been openly hostile to allowing yeah. for Linux development because Apple, like most companies, realize, like, yeah, make it reasonably easy so our you know, people just don't immediately go tearing into it. So, yeah. Linux on Max. That's always Very true. Have you? Mm -hmm. I, I got a Mac to put Linux on and ended up giving it to someone because they needed a computer. I mean, this has been Aww. years ago. <laughs> so I've never had a uh, like Mac at any of my houses with just okay. playing around with like Yellow Dog Linux or anything like that. I guess on a modern yeah. Mac, what do you just run? Their x86. It doesn't matter anymore. So, well, they used to be. Yeah, you can put... Yeah. yeah, you can put put a bunch of on it. Uh, I you know I have a I have Macs from every generation in my collection. I honestly have over a hundred Macs in my collection. It's a nice round number. <laughs> yeah, now, and they all most of them have Linux on them. <laughs> well, then they're worthless. They're not being yeah. They should be vintage, man. Period. Correct. Come on. Oh, well, some of them I have dual boot so that I have the original, uh, worse, you know, like, man. I mean, if you're a true Mac, Mac collector, you wouldn't have Linux running on them. Oh, yes. Because I get to put Linux on all the things on all my vintage computers. That's the point. <laughs> it destroys the value. No, it actually, it makes them uh, uh, useful. <laughs> you could surf the Internet. <laughs> With the um, modern internet. <laughs> I saw somebody, um, what did they get? Uh, oh, they had an Amiga uh, video came out. I, I'm spacing on the, you know, it's tech YouTuber, you know, retro. And uh, yeah. he got the um, Amiga up and running with a uh, modern <laughs> for the Amiga browser. And like, yes. I, I watched that for what it is. I'm like, that's neat. And of course, there's always the person in the comments like, yes, I now you can totally use the Amiga. It's completely just like, get out of here. Stop. I mean, you, you either need like psychological help or reality check. I mean, it's fun to play Aww. with. It's neat. But just, come on. Come on. You're not a daily driver. Don't. No, <laughs> no, no. But I do know someone that uses uh, the uh, Pi Amiga. Uh, software and does do a uh, lot of uh, a lot of work with it so, on workbench <laughs> maybe developing amiga stuff but um yeah yeah that's just like the reality of it because the one word you can't finish that cynics with they do a lot of productive work I'm like yeah you're, you're, de <laughs> you're dealing with something with a fractional amount of power compared to the original raspberry pi so yeah yeah <laughs> i mean they're fun to play around with fun it's just fun to play with other uh, classic operating systems. Oh, it is. Systems. And it's fun to make stuff do yeah. it's things that's not supposed to. 100%. Things they weren't in. 
I'm, yeah, I'm actively following the development of the Game Boy, original Game Boy Wi-Fi cartridge you guys developing. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. currently got it to the <laughs> point where on the original Game Boy, you can connect Wi-Fi and pull Wikipedia articles up in real time. Like, that is fascinating. So cool. Does it have any practical use? Not a one, but <laughs> very interested in stuff like that. So, uh, what do we got? Oh, we need to thank some people. Jill, yeah. we do uh, our patrons. We if you do. like what we do, you want to support us, kick us. That's how we finance this nonsense. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a ton of levels. That's how you can get a little access to community things. Like, we got our own little yeah. Mania server so we can hide away from the rest of the internet. Actually, it's going to be streaming on Twitch. <laughs> But if you do want to hide away from the rest of the internet, we have a Discord where we're at the other six days of the week having interesting conversations. I would like to try to encapsulate yes. it, but it would be a fool's errand because it goes places, random places. It's technical stuff, but it's also things like, really, you guys are going to start playing a uh, darkest, not darkest, <laughs> Dark Souls board game? All right, fine, I'll watch. Yeah, there you go. But we get IRC. Oh, it's we... always free. It's completely open. Everything's yeah. tied up for a live show together between Twitch chat, IRC chat, and um, Discord. If you're wondering why you see the bot, if you see chat bot popping up in any of those, mm -hmm. that's what it is. So we can all talk to each other. But what were you saying, Joe? Yeah. So we have a wonderful active Discord. It, it's it's so it, it's amazing. You know, 24 everything hours. Everything you said was true. Yeah. We have a yeah. active Discord. Mm hmm. Definitely. And we have uh, oh, some of our wonderful patrons that have increased their pledges to us. Nubbin, thank you so much. And Romeo Sid Vicious. Aw, thank you so much. Big hugs from the, your Linux Gamecast family. And we have a brand <laughs> new patron showing up. Yeah, Rue. Rue's a new patron. And I love that name. <laughs> I don't know. You be careful with stuff like that. You'll be like, oh, yeah, it's clearly Rue. I'm like, oh, no, no, it's um, Ro UX. Ro UX? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I remember that even like in grade school, like the first day of class and they were going through it. Yeah, trying to figure out people's names. <laughs> I, I always had time if they were going, if I realized they were going by first name, like, well, I got a minute. And they could have met him like, Oh, go ahead. Try to mess that up somehow. You can't. It's uh, oh right. yeah. It's like messing up Bob mine's, or something. Right. Yeah. Or Jill. Ben, like, mine's Jill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's just it's hard. <laughs> the kids would some kind times called me Lidge, but <laughs> I mean, so. outside of that, you don't have to worry about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. We got <laughs> a holiday slash Ooh. diabetes. That looks horrible. Oh, it's got uh, candy canes on it and um, oh, uh, holiday M&Ms. <laughs> Green and red holiday and no, M&Ms. No, no, they're Skittles. Mm. Mm. No? Yeah, no, that wouldn't be good on there. <laughs> um. I don't know. I don't but know. It, See, I'm assuming this thing bites back. That's why there's not one but three forks. But this does look like a vanilla cream pie with peppermint. Oh, a peppermint bark cream pie, which Jill would love. <laughs> I, I saw a guy on Reddit earlier this week that made a pizza <laughs> with candy canes on it. Oh, yeah, that would be a little minty, wouldn't it? <laughs> with their cheese. <laughs> it, it, they melted it. It was a landscape okay. of nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So... You know, eh. you're walking around the house and you're thinking to yourself, man, my keyboard blinks. That's awesome. My mouse blinks a little yeah. bit. That's pretty tight, man. Even the lights in the ceiling, I got them blinking, man. I'm living this RGB lifestyle. But you'd be wrong because there's more things left to blink. Yeah. So we talked about how you can bring holiday cheer to your Linux desktop. Uh, so why not use Linux and a Raspberry Pi to light your Christmas tree? <laughs> Yay! And you could put it in lots of uh, beautiful lighting modes, all the different colors of RGB rainbow vomit. That would work. And all you need is a Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi. And this creator used a Raspberry Pi Zero V2. And you just need a string of NeoPixel lights, 5-volt power supply, green electrical tape, and a case, a Raspberry Pi case. And it's actually pretty fairly easy to set up the software. Um, you can do it either, uh, set it up either direct or headless. Oh, is this your Christmas a, button? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at all the all all those uh you know, RGB colors that you can pick with the uh node red node red program. That's what he used. And it looked like wiring the LEDs to the Pi is actually a fairly simple process because of that breakout header on the Raspberry Pi. And all you have to do is connect the ground and signal cables from the LEDs. And uh, But you can go to our show notes for all the details on um, the, the tutorial for installing all the software and doing all the things. And it doesn't look like it's going to take very long to do. So this is something you could do just before Christmas. So that's why we picked it. <laughs> I, part of me wanted to... I kept my mouth shut because I wanted to say, man, isn't that overkill using a Pi Zero W for light control? And I remember what I'm using a Pi 4 for. I'm like, all right, Sean. Yeah. Um, no kill, like overkill. Mm. Blinking trees. Yeah. That, that seems like yeah. a light source. Because admittedly, admittedly, when I first, because you wouldn't notice it in here, but all the lights, uh, three, six, seven lights in here. Mm -hmm. Take it back, eight. All are RGB blinking you know, but they're bulbs, but they get yeah, that option. The bulbs you can adjust. Yeah. I've done that once, you know, I open up the, uh, Android controller app and it sees all the bulbs and it's got one mode that's like disco or something. I hit that once. Mm -hmm. After I cool. crawled my way back off the floor, I cut it off and, um, never again. Now they're all just set to like a blue. So, but, I mean, that's, that's neat that it's got an app, I guess <laughs> you could play around with it. I, I just get bored. Yeah. Easy. It'd be red. Yeah. When no, I get done with them, like red tree. There we go. It, it's not, it, a uh, very well done um, app. It kind of looks like a, a flow chart to the color wheel. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I actually have a friend who used a Raspberry Pi and the app X lights um, to not only control his Christmas tree, but has created an amazing light show timed with music on his house and front yard. So it, you can even, you know, Extend this to your outdoor lighting as well. <laughs> That's right, kids. Inflict it on your neighbors because you don't like them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be like, imagine living in the same neighborhood. I was going to say next to her, even cross or even down the street. You know, the guy who does the uh, Christmas and Halloween music video light shows every year on YouTube. Yes. The of you. Yeah. The good ones. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, yeah. The full on productions now. And yeah. Like, Somebody's living next to him going, I remember when this didn't happen. Because <laughs> you got to. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't have to have yeah. blackout curtains on the side of the house, but I do know that's the thing. Hey, if you want to tell us about how you've made things <laughs> blink, be it a pumpkin Christmas tree or, um, I don't know, a reindeer. Don't make reindeers blink. It's nasty business, yeah. kids. You can do that. Head over to our web zone, LinuxTeamCast.com. Hit this contact button. That's the thing. Send us an email. Mm -hmm. We'll get it. Like Sanja did. Sandra writes, yeah. Hey, about that OBS <laughs> virtual webcam. I'm like, oh no, this is nice. Why? Why did I? It says, hey, thanks, mate. I've tried several tutorials. Nothing worked except for this one. Cause it's you said, uh, none of them mentioned to install Linux headers, install headers, and restart it. Receive bacon. He didn't throw that in. I did. Then everything worked smoothly. That's why I mm -hmm. do the interfacing Linux stuff. That's why I do the OBS basics things. I need to do more. I've been busy the past couple of weeks. But, you know, the best tutorial, tutorial, mm -hmm. I should say, is one that's accurate. And people really yeah. struggle on that second part. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. it just irritates me. Things that are not outlined and documented correctly. Proper technical documentation after I spent all day yesterday in the past two weeks piecing mm. together poorly documented attempts at setting up truck media servers or truck media to server stadium. That yeah. was the accumulation of like, have I documented it yet? No. So I'm going to shut up, but you get my point. Um, thanks man. I am glad that worked out for yeah, you. No. Very nice. On that same <laughs> tracky mania theme, Katana had a suggestion, Joe, because I had the idea okay. of calling <laughs> our team 5g. For no reason. Yeah. It just seemed like a good so, round number. <laughs> so Katana Steel in chat said, uh, okay, for 5G, here here was his uh his phrase. Grizzled, grumpy, gaming, grandpa's grading, game, getting great. So yeah, 
That's 8G. <laughs> yeah, Katana, but I like it. <laughs> grumpy gaming grandpas, except when I pop in, there'll be a girl too that's grumpy in gaming. But I don't get grumpy, so. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> Katana, you're impervious to arithmetic, my man. Uh, that, that's a lot of G's. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if... a lot of G's. <laughs> One, two, three, four, that's eight. five, six, seven. There is eight. Yeah, there is um, eight. He was accurate. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if uh, we deserve that many G's. <laughs> I, I just feel yeah. a little stingy, a little bloated at five, eight. That, that's just <laughs> flaunting it, man. This is flaunting it. Oh, our Theron has it right. Grumpy grandmas. So grizzled, grumpy, gaming, grandpas, and grandpas. <laughs> I was going to say, and grandmas. Yeah, see, Grading the, yeah, game, you getting great. Yeah, in there. Um, yeah, I can't have the end. Geriatrics. So that doesn't work. <laughs> Geriatric grandma's grandpa's grading game getting great. <laughs> Still open to suggestions. We're taking themes here. Yeah. We need some for the t shirts. Yes. <laughs> Very nice, Katana. I love that. Thanks for writing. And all right. Well, hey, thanks for showing up for this holiday edition because that's what it is. We'll be back next yes. week. Uh, Jill, you were going on holiday. Yeah, I'm going to be on holiday, so someone is filling in for me. I wonder who that is. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. So Yes. <laughs> uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to roll the credits. Thanks for showing up. And uh, yeah, here they come, if I can hit buttons. Yeah. We love you all, our wonderful patrons. Oh, thank you, Romeo Sid Vicious, for the sub as well. And for increasing your pledge. Thank you so much. Wow. And again, thank you, Nubbin, for increasing your pledge. And to Rue, our new patron. And thank you to all our wonderful patrons here on Linux Gamecast and LWW. Popwire's the future. <laughs> our sea monsters, our death notes, <laughs> our advisors. Yeah, that's you, Artharen. <laughs> Our chairlings, we love you all. Episode and I can't believe LWW is 306. I can, I've been here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Happy holidays, everyone. El Santa, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>